Hi everyone! Welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author and today is Sewing Talk Tuesday. So I'm going to be doing this um, a little differently and this is going to be kind of a quick little um, video. I got my new glasses. Aren't they cute? <laughs> um, so anyway, what I want to show you is I've made some progress on the Sawtooth Star Quilt that we've been working on since the beginning of the, uh, the lockdown. I finally, finally, finally got the stars all sewn together. Um, I finally got it placed on my table and laid out so that I can actually start sewing the rows together. So I'm gonna flip the camera and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here. But um, if I can flip the camera, oh, I don't, oh, there it is. Okay, so as you can see, this is what we've got going here. So this is what I have laid out and it's actually quite a large quilt. It's a lot bigger than I anticipated it might be. So those are 20 blocks and these are all cut down to 12 inches. So it's going to be very large but I do and I need to do a border as well I just haven't decided yet thank you Jill I just haven't decided yet what I'm going to border this with um, my husband was actually helping me lay this out last night and I told him I said I don't know what I'm gonna do with this quilt and he's like well you could give it to me <laughs> so I guess he's put dibs on this now so this will be his quilt um, another thing that I've done I did post on my Instagram gonna just kind of walk over here I've been working on some of these little pinwheels uh, thank you Glenda for the back of this quilt actually so um, I will be using this on my backing and um, as you can see my pinwheels are not perfect I want to show you because I know sometimes we get hung up on these things you can see that my centers are off this is because now I know why mine are off. And this is because when I was um, cutting these, my background fabric, this fabric here, was actually bigger than my color fabric. It could be the border, Jill, you're right. Um, I have some leftover colors though, and I was thinking about maybe doing a keyboard border, but I'm not sure, I'll have to play with it. But you can see here, this one is really off. But I'm not too worried about this because, like I said, I'm just going to be probably putting it on the back. Maybe not. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Here's some more that I need to finish doing. Um, let me see if I can show you what I... No, nope, these ones were actually pretty doggone accurate. So the other ones that I just showed you were not. Those were a real problem. So... Uh, the other thing that I want to share with you is that I went to Joann's today. Oh, I went shopping, <laughs> which is great. I'm going to show you what I picked up there. I got this. I bought the bolt. Don't laugh at me. I bought the bolt. So I bought this bolt here of this um, really pretty flower fabric that I'm going to be making stuff with for babies and putting in my Etsy shop. And then I bought this really cool gray because I love that again on the bolt and then I bought some minky on the bolt which is pretty cool um, this is a hot pink I know sometimes it gets a little bit crazy on camera and you can't really see things as well and then I bought this really pretty light pink um, cuddle with little stars and then the gray cuddle I wish you could feel this stuff. It's super soft. This is a peachy color and it goes really cute with that flower. Um, this little flower bolt here that I just showed you. I know I'm a little bit all over the place and I do apologize for that. And then I'm going to come over here. Got my iron on. It's nice and toasty. I have some in the bag here. My craft room is kind of a mess because I have this quilt laid out. And um, so I need to put things away. 
but I bought some of this blue minky. I bought some pink minky. Got some of these little lambs. These are real cute. This is like the little blue ones that I made before. And then I got pink polka dots and gray polka dots. Oh, and they had some of this vinyl that they had cut that I've never used before. So I figured, hey, why not, right? Why not give it a try? So that is what I have been doing today. So shopping and all that good fun stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm just working on finishing up the Sawtooth Star Quilt because I'm ready to be done with it. Um, I will show you how I'm gonna quilt it. I haven't really decided yet. Um, I haven't decided if I wanna maybe do this as a quilt as you go, um, cause you can kind of do whatever you want. You know, sky's kind of the limit. Uh, if you'd like to see this done on qu as quilt as you go, give me a thumbs up so that I know. The reason I say that is because it lets you focus on each block and you can do some really cool stitching with that. Um, whereas trying to put a big quilt underneath the machine, because sometimes that gets very, very difficult. And I know I've done a couple of quilts, I think as quilt as you go, and I've shown you how to attach the borders and all that kind of thing with the sashing. But um, it's always a good reminder to see it done again. And people do quilt as you go many, many different ways. Um, like I attach my borders completely different than other people. And, uh, but I do use the sashing when I um, put my blocks together. So the only thing that I get concerned about when doing that is that you do lose a little bit of your, your secondary design when you're putting in the sashing. So that's just something that you kind of have to remember when you're doing that technique. But by golly, that technique turns out really cool. Um, it enables you to make a very large quilt um, with limited, you know, if you have a limited space in your sewing machine, you can make a king size quilt using quilt as you go. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't get big and I'm not saying that it doesn't get hard to, to do it because Lord knows it does, but, um, but it's more doable. So I do like it for that reason. And um, I think I have a ton of fabric <laughs> that I used in this actual quilt that I need to probably use up because I don't know that I'll use it in anything else. So yeah, so it's cool. I've got my squares here that I need to prep and get ready to sew back together again so that I can get them all in those, uh, those little pinwheels. But that's what I've been doing. I have just been kind of, I, work has been a little bit crazy. Um, I had an accounting issue that I had to clear up. So I spent most of the day yesterday battling with that. Today was another challenging day, just so you know. Um, I was playing around in our Dropbox and I ended up deleting all of the files from 2016, 17, and 18 that were in there. And I went to Dropbox to try to recover them because they have this thing that you can do. It's called Rewind, only guess what? I still couldn't. And so all the files were empty. So I thought I was gonna have a heart attack and die on the spot. <laughs> but I had backed my computer up on an external hard drive and I was able to recover and find them. So that was a major plus. Hi, Patina, how are you? So I'm telling you what, I've already had a crazy week and it's only Tuesday. So I don't know. So today is, uh, tonight is pizza night. And uh, so we're gonna have pizza and then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna watch Betty, the Dirty John Betty <laughs> story. Hi Pam, welcome. And so, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. I need some downtime, I think. I think my brain needs to just shut down for a while. Been on just go. And uh, so, yeah. And Sunday, my daughter had uh, Father's Day over at her house. Excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. 
Awesome. Working on a quilt is always good. It's always good fun. It's relaxing. Um, she had all of us over there for Father's Day, and it was really cool. And um, we had stuffed burgers. I'd never had a stuffed burger before, and it was so delicious. I couldn't eat it all, though, because it was so filling and so thick. And, um, yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun. So... The weather was pretty nice. It was actually, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't hot, too hot. It was um, a little on the cooler side. It was cloudy. And so I still don't have a tan. <laughs> I need to get a tan. <laughs> so anyway, um, so what have you guys been up to? You guys having a good week so far? Uh, buena. Um, if you go to the playlist, Rag Quilts, it's the last one that I did, I do believe. So it should be the newest one up at the top. And I can't remember what it's called. And I can't get on here and tell you right now because my phone will not let me do that. But it's the last one that I did. What's that one? Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Oh, Pam, that's wonderful. Oh, Bettina, I will keep your sister in my prayers. I hope everything goes well. Oh, Susan, that's awesome. Hi, Glenda. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, and I was going to tell you that too. So I was watching a, I don't know, I get suckered into all these things. I get suckered into stuff really easily. So I was watch. I was on Facebook the other day and all of these ads for this brush kept coming up. This lounge brush, I guess is what it's called. Anyway, you're supposed to be able to take it and, you know, brush your hair and it's supposed to be really awesome. And so I thought, oh, what the heck? I'll give it a try. So I bought this brush. I haven't got it yet, so I'll let you know what I think of it. But uh, so far, no idea. But it's supposed to be really cool. Oh, hi, Robin. I'm glad you're here. I know my schedule is so sketchy. I know. Hi, Candy. I know. I usually try, if I go live, I try to go at 5. I try to be, to work it because 5 o'clock here is like 7 o'clock on the East Coast. It's 6 o'clock in Central Time and then it's 4 on the West Coast. So I try to find like that happy medium to where it's not like, because if we do it at 6 and that interferes with my dinner time here, I know it's really hard. So the cool thing is, is you can always catch the replay. I know it's not the same, but, you know, I mean, I do try to go live. I try to do the, the Sewing Talk Tuesdays. I know sometimes I do them pre-recorded. Sometimes I do them live. I've been trying to do more live stuff um, just because it's more fun to interact with everybody. Um, whereas when you're pre-recording, you're not, inter you know, interacting with anybody and you have to do all the editing and then you have to upload and... Yeah, it, it can be a real pain in the butt because it's very time consuming sometimes. But um, Fridays, I definitely do pre-recorded. I did not last week. I know I was kind of slacking, but hi, Gwen. Um, but hey, you know, life happens. So there's that, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, so this one, I think so too, Bert. I like the lives. They're really neat. There's no, there's no bloopers in live. What you see is what you get. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the Tuesdays, I really wanted to do the live sew along. So like tonight, I really wanted to do the sew along and I wanted to put the quilt together with you guys, but I just don't have the energy to do it today. I've just been getting my butt kicked at work. And so I'm kind of like, nah, I'm. I'm just not feeling it. And I find that when I'm not in the mood to do, to work on a quilt or to work on a project, if I do start working on it, I will screw it up and make so many mistakes 
and then I'll end up ripping it out and I just my frustration level gets so so high that it really is just better to just not do it until I'm ready to work on it so that's kind of where I'm at today just, just gonna take a break <laughs> But I'll tell you what, I did work really hard getting all of those sewn together. Oh my goodness. I just sat down here and just was sewing away. And it was actually kind of nice because I didn't have my grandkids this weekend um, because their parents were off for Father's Day. So on Saturday and Sunday, I actually had more time to spend down here working on this. So right, Gwen, I know. It's crazy, right? And my son, too. Yep, I'm going to move you guys over because my thumb's about ready to fall off here. Um, and my son, on Father's Day, so he had been begging me to make a t-shirt for my, my husband. And I was like, I kept telling him, okay, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Well, I didn't get to it until Sunday morning, which was Father's Day. And then... I started cutting out all the vinyl for it and I kept making mistakes and so I had to redo it three different times and uh, <laughs> just was like I'm done and now I was laughing about that I was telling my husband that the other day I was like you know when you're doing stuff when you're recording hi Beverly and people watch you do projects and stuff they always see how smooth everything goes right so you're seeing the project as it comes together and it looks like it's so easy and so flawless but you don't know about the 50 times that you know that person had to seam rip or they sewed everything backwards or <laughs> the seam wasn't sewn straight so i mean it it happens to everybody so i was kind of laughing about that just because you know, I watch I watch YouTube YouTubers too sometimes, and I'm like, oh, God, that looks really awesome. Like, you know, that looks like it, not very hard at all. And then you go to try it yourself, and you're like, whoa. So, <clears throat> I wonder how many times sometimes people have to do takes. <laughs> I know for me, it's been a while. I do try to show you guys my mistakes though as I go along because I think that in doing so, it helps you to see the process number one and number two that it happens to everybody yes <laughs> and it's frustrating too because sometimes you're like what is wrong with me why can't i get this and it's it's not it's not you everybody has those moments you know where you're just kind of like wow um so you know so that's why i try to show you guys the mistakes that i make you know like when I was making one of those pinwheels too. Oh, I'm glad it helps, Bettina. Um, I was pressing and I didn't press it right. And so I put a, like a, I don't know, I cinched like the, the fabric. So it looks all, it looks weird. And I was sitting there trying to straighten it out. It, it just didn't work, so. And that was all on me. And then I ended up stretching the fabric cause I was like, yeah, trying to force it. And sometimes when you get to that point, if it's not salvageable or if it's so bad, sometimes you just have to toss it to the side and start over. And other times, you know what? You can just be like, I don't even care. And so I know I've talked about the three foot rule before. <laughs> Beverly, let me know when you master that. <laughs> I still can't do a blind stitch. No, you can always see my stitches. When I do, um, it's so funny, when I hand sew binding on the back of a quilt, oi, it's a hot mess. I'm just, I'm just saying. And I do it just like everybody else. And no, you can still see my little stitches underneath. It drives me insane. Um, my husband tells me I'm crazy because I'm the only one that really notices that. And he's probably right. But because I know that it's there, it, I don't like it. So when I do binding, typically, my preference is to machine sew it on all the way around like you normally would. Then I flip it over and I press it and then I start do it using my quilt clips. I use these little quilt clips and I clamp down. And <laughs> sorry, Lisa. And um, I find a really nice zigzag stitch and I zigzag and I make sure it catches the edge of my, my quilt. And I think it turns out fantastic. 
It works great for baby quilts, especially baby quilts or toddler blankets or a blanket that a kid is gonna have because they're gonna be hard on it anyway and it's gonna get washed a lot. So I do not hand bind quilts for babies um, or children. I do only machine. And then um, for like an adult, like my husband's when I made his um, for his birthday a couple years ago, I did, I hand stitched it um, because I don't know why. <laughs> I think I just wanted something to do while watching TV, <laughs> to be honest. And so I did, and by the time I was done with it, I was like, why did I do this? So this one, I probably will not do that. This one will have a machine sewn binding on it as well. It just goes much faster and the quilt is done. And, and the zigzag looks cool. It gives the quilt character. Now, if you're entering your quilt into a show, or something like that, then you're gonna to wanna to be really, really careful and you're gonna to have to do the hand stitch. And you gotta be careful that your stitches aren't showing and they have to be, I don't know, so many inches apart. I mean, it's really crazy. So I've never entered a quilt into any show or contest. Um, I've considered it. But I don't know if I really want somebody to pick through my work like that because it might give me a complex. And um, I don't agree with that. So I don't know that I would subject myself to that at this point in my life. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm happy with all my wonderful mistakes. <laughs> it's just easier, right, Gwen? Just that machine binding is just just so much easier and it looks nice I mean it looks really really nice so yeah there's nothing wrong with that I'm getting better with my serger I love to do the serger um, I should do a video on how I do my serge I do Beverly I do I straight stitch the binding on all the way around the quilt to begin with you know just to get it down and then when I flip it over and I start sewing on that edge. Yes, I do zigzag it. I use a different zigzag though. It's not like a regular zigzag. It's got like a couple different stitches. It like goes, there's like three stitches up, three stitches down, three stitches up, three stitches down. I just find that it holds it better than just a regular zigzag stitch because a regular zigzag stitch comes undone very easily, at least in my opinion. Um, zigzag stitches are my favorite stitches to seam rip because they just, psh, come on out yeah I think you'll really like it you know you know who actually I'll tell you where I actually got that idea from I can't claim it as my own I was watching um, a Missouri Star Quilt uh, company video one day she was making a baby blanket and um, Jenny Doan she was using that very zigzag stitch and I was like oh my gosh that is so cool why haven't I done that you know because I used the regular zigzag stitch but I had not used that particular stitch and it turned out awesome and I like to use the variegated thread too if you don't have variegated thread I would definitely try to match it up as much as you possibly can to your quilt though but the variegated is cool because if it's a little bit off or you didn't sew exactly straight along the edge <clears throat> you can't really tell with the variegated. That's why I like to use those different kinds of threads. <laughs> it covers up all my mistakes. <laughs> and then people think, oh, it looks so awesome. I'm like, no. <laughs> Let me show you every mistake. <laughs> so, but I'm going to tell you, a wise quilter once told me, and she owned a quilt store, if you stand three feet back away from your quilt, and you cannot see, you're welcome, Glenda, and you cannot see the mistake, it does not exist. And she is right. Damage control, exactly. <laughs> uh, Lisa, I get my variegated thread um, from a, I get some of it from Joann's. Yes, it's wonderful. I use the Gutterman um, variegated thread. And you can get that one at Joann's. You can also get it online. I also use um, Mettler. I love Mettler thread. I 
can't tell you that enough. I love Mettler thread. It works really, really well for quilting. The other one that I use is um, Superior, the King Tut brand. It's pretty expensive, but it's good thread. It works really well. And this one, this is what I'm talking about. So this is like a Mettler thread. Now this spool is just about done, but this one has a silk finish cotton and it was 547 yards of thread on this little spool. And I think I paid at the quilt store, I think it was probably $7. Um, this is really, really good thread. I really like it a lot. And then um, there's one more. Sorry, I'm looking at my thread collection to see what else I have. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I bought not too long ago, and I did an unboxing of it, an unboxing video of the Bro Thread. It is worth the price, Lisa. Yes, it's worth every penny. You don't have any breaking or any of that shredding and knotting up and any of that mess. Oh, that drives me crazy. Um, but I bought that Bro Thread, those 80 spools of thread off of Amazon. And it's actually in my Amazon store. So if you click below in the, the link section, in the description section, you'll see all the links. Um, but anyway, I used that to quilt a quilt and it worked great. It was fantastic thread. I also sewed my daughter's chiffon bridesmaid's dress with it at the, when I did the hem. They had a color that matched that dress exactly and I was able to use that thread and it just went on like a dream. I did have to use a different needle, of course, but you know, when you're working with chiffon, you're, you don't want to use a quilting needle. <laughs> I kind of found that out the hard way. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that thread was amazeballs too and that thread was really very inexpensive. So I was pretty happy with that. And uh, so, yeah, that is, I think, I don't think I did anything else. Hmm. What else did I do? Nothing really, honestly. I've just been really focused on trying to get this one particular quilt done just because we started it so long ago and it was the sew along and I got so sidetracked. And I do apologize to those of you who were doing the sew along with me. And we, I did not get that finished right away. I do apologize. But I have seen the quilts that you guys have made with this pattern and they're beautiful. So good job. And you should all be very, very proud of yourselves because I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of you for finishing it because mine's still not finished, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, so thank you for sharing that with us in the, in the Facebook group because I love seeing the things that you're working on. I've seen some really adorable elephants that y'all are making. I've seen the rag quilts. Oh my gosh, you guys are, you're all very talented. You really, really are. I, um, I try to go through and I try to see every post that's in there. Um, I get a gazillion notifications across all social media platforms. So I try to respond to all of them. And if I don't get to them, please do not think that I am ignoring you. I am not. I am just trying to get to all of them and answer everybody's questions. And sometimes it's really hard to do that, especially since it's just me. I don't have an assistant. I don't have, it's just me. <laughs> so that's what you're, you're up against is me. I try to respond to all YouTube um, comments as they come through. I don't always get to them. Sometimes it takes me a week. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer. Um, so if you post a question or something, please know that I will try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Okay, same thing on Instagram, same thing on Facebook, everywhere. It just gets to be a lot and emails too. And so, yes, <laughs> but I love hearing from everybody and um, I'm doing the best that I can to keep up with all of it. And so, so far so good, I think. I feel like I'm staying on top of it. If I've missed anybody's questions or whatnot, feel free to ask it again if I didn't answer. 
and I will do my best to, to get to that. So always want to be helpful. Always want to help you guys out with your questions. If you, you know, your quilting questions or even cricket questions. I get a lot of cricket questions. Um, if I can answer them, I do. If I don't know something, I will let you know that I don't know because I'm not going to claim that I know everything because I don't. And, uh, yes, Melody is awesome. Melody Lane, I assume you're talking about, right? Uh, so, yeah, she's pretty cool. I really like her. Actually, I've, I've been watching her for a long time. She's the one that actually really taught me how to use my Cricut machine. She's amazing. So shout out to Melody Lane. <laughs> Tell her the crafty author says hi. <laughs> Check her out. You will really like her. She's so much fun. She's just a fun lady. Um, so yeah. So I did want to let you guys know that I do see your posts. And that I am trying to respond and that I am I'm liking them and loving them. I'm trying to leave a comment below so that you know that I've seen them and that it's really me who's who's commenting because it is really me. And so, yeah. So anyway, well, I am going to stop talking right now. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I really do appreciate that. Appreciate that so much. I do want to let you guys know that tomorrow um, is the first ever members only live stream and that will happen at five o'clock mountain standard time so if you are a youtube member who supports me this is this is um it's a monthly subscription you get perks and one of the perks is you get a live session with me one on not one on one but you get a live session with me um if you are a jelly roll subscriber excuse me and above and you can ask me any questions that you would like. So it is not necessary since I'm, you know, I clearly do live videos, but if you would like a little bit extra, check that out. Um, there's a join button and you should be able to click on that and it'll give you all the details and information that you need to know about that, okay? Um, so to, I wanna just put that reminder out there to the members that that is happening tomorrow. So I will see you at five o'clock tomorrow. And um, have your questions ready, because we're going to chat. And uh, so I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And um, I'll see you guys in a couple of days. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.